Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Sprinklebeard, and today we are doing an Evaluate the Epic on the tank, Muriel. Muriel actually is one of the most interesting tanks in the game. So in this game, there's no way for us to increase our magic resistance. And there's only like two champions in the game besides your mages that have good MR. And Muriel is the defender with the highest magic resistance that I'm aware of. Um, so majority of other defenders compared to Muriel are gonna have like a 700 at best MR stat. And Muriel has this commanding 1917 uh, MR stat, which is kind of crazy to think about. So if we go to Titus, 557 MR, absolutely garbage. Um, Baron, if we go to him, 662. That's a third of what Muriel has. Um, who's a really good tank? Olog is an amazing tank in this game. 734. Now, because of Olog's shield, you could argue that he kind of has like pseudo MR, but th that's not fair, right? We're talking about just flat MR in the game. So if you feel like you're struggling on certain bosses that are just doing enormous amounts of magic damage to you, I, I don't think Muriel is actually your answer. I think Olog is still better. However, understand that Muriel is a little bit of a better, well-rounded tank. So certain things in the campaign, you're going to notice that she's not tanking as much damage from. Or I don't know why you would use her in Dragon. There's a reason, but if you were to use her in Dragon, you will notice she does not die quickly, um, which could give her some interesting benefits in the Dragon. Um, the legendary counterpart to her that also has enormous MR is Azor, the dwarf. He's got two hammers. So apparently hammers equals magic resistance in this game. So Muriel is a defender, but she is also a healer. So she actually has one of the most unique roles in the game. So let's talk about her kit. So her basic attack, slap something with her hammer. I like it. Her passive... Every 12 seconds, the next attack grants defense-based healing to one nearby ally, restoring HP equal to 60% of the hero's healing multiplier to that, that champion that you're targeting. So for those of us that are not familiar with the healing mechanic in this game, healing has a three-part system. So you restore HP based upon the target's max HP and the caster's main stat. So in this case, her main stat is defense. So the higher her defense, the more she is healing for. And then also we want a higher healing multiplier on her specifically because she gives 60% of her healing multiplier to the target that she's healing. Finally, her ultimate, Hymn of Light, increases defense by 30% for 20 seconds. During the period, grants defense-based healing to the ally with the lowest HP in range per second, restoring HP equal to 50% of the hero's he this hero's healing multiplier. Uh, what's great about Muriel is that she's actually, in my to my knowledge, the only ground unit that actively can heal somebody else. Uh, there are champions like Volca that give everybody life steal. So you could argue that like there is another healer in the game that's not a platform champion. What makes Muriel specific is that you're going to be building her with like HP percentage, defense percentage, and healing effects. So she's going to be massively tanky as well as healing well based upon her tankiness, which is an amazing feeling. She's also one of the few tanks in the game where I would say it's almost better to build her with a primary stat when you're talking about uh, bangles, amulets, and rings of giving her defense percentage and then having substats of healing multiplier and HP percentage to help with her tankiness. With that being said, I will say that out of the tanks, some of her other stats are a bit lower. She tends to have a little bit lower HP. And then because she has this high magic resistance, her base defense is kind of low compared to the other tanks in this game. Also, because most of the time we count on our tanks to tank, not to heal, 
her role in the game is a little awkward because when we summon her, we want her to be able to tank as much as possible. But if we summon her specifically because we wanted a tanky healer, she's not going to tank as much because she can heal herself. But you still probably want a healer to be spot healing her so that she can be either healing other allies or when she uses her ultimate, it is hitting that person with like the lowest HP. So if you were to use her in something like Clan Boss or uh, let's say you were to use her in Gear Raid, uh, in Gear Raid, I could see her having a very valuable place blocking off enemy units from coming in and then like healing the party behind her while she's keeping things from coming into the fight. I don't necessarily think that's the best use for her. I'm saying it's a good use for her for sure. Let's go on to her Awakenings. Awakenings, when Hymn of Light is uh, triggered, so that's her ultimate, restores 25% HP for all allies. This is a really, really cool um, Awakening. So if Muriel is your thing, if you like the Paladin class and you like that, like, no offense, like she's a very, very sexy looking Paladin lady. This is really, really great design that she looks heavily armored. She still looks sexy. I don't know how her back would bend that way with this giant shoulder pauldrons on and holding up a shield. But what, whatever, you know, it's it's Muriel. She can be sexy and a paladin. Uh, yeah, Th this, this A1 is absolutely amazing on her. A2, extra 100 defense. That is good. We want that extra tankiness and synergizes with her healing effect. So like it even more. Increases Muriel's attack by 10% of her defensive stat. This will, is what will let her start doing some damage. I will admit, I don't care about Muriel's damage stat. That is me personally. If you feel like you need damage from your tanks to clear certain content, this could obviously be a useful thing for you. Magic Res, plus 200. What's interesting is a lot of the other tanks get like a damage reduction minus like five, like it's like plus 5% damage reduction. So her getting Magic Res specifically is a little strange, but what's good is that just makes her tankier on that side and she got 100 defense earlier. So she is getting tankier on both sides. I don't know what that translates out to as a percentage of damage dealt. I would kind of argue the deeper and deeper you get into the game, I would rather have that flat damage reduction over 200 magic resist. However, maybe 200 magic resist does equate to like 10% magic reduction. I don't have those stats in front of me. Awakening five. When Muriel is on the field, she creates a holy light realm that heals three adjacent allies, restoring HP equal to 2% of their max HP for them. This sounds absolutely bonkers. Um, I'm not in a position to get Muriel up to five, but if she creates a holy realm um, that hits those adjacent allies and is constantly healing them for 2%, this is why I mentioned earlier for Dragon. Um, she kind of has a place there. Artifact Raid, I could see her being on the front line as a paladin, they are meant to be a frontline healer. They're meant to be up front doing damage, tanking, as well as healing those around them. Muriel is one of the few tanks that I'd be very curious to see if somebody was to six star her, if she could tank Salazar at his highest levels and be healing up the party in a, like as an additional thing um, to keep everybody up enough. Now, I have the the luxury that for my artifact team that they have lifesteal and I have a reliable healer. So right now I'm not struggling with that specifically. I'm just not killing the boss quickly enough. Uh, but I think that if I get my last two nightmare champions to six star, they have great potential to burst down the boss. No problem. All right, we're going to talk about where do we feel Muriel is best at? Like, what, where can you use her in the game and take the best effect of her? And this is going to be a really weird one for most players. Because she is a tank 
anywhere you need a tank. And because she's a healer, anywhere you feel like you might need an additional healer. The fact that she does both jobs, and I have used her in my um, in my promotion raid uh, for fighters. Uh, one of the issues I was having is that when I first got into my higher levels of fighters, so like levels 14 and 15, at the time on my account, I didn't have very good fighters. So I was really struggling for my fighters to live through the content. And I didn't have enough tanks to tank every lane of the melee content. So what I was having to do, this is not going to be a good showcase for Muriel, but it is something that you could do. So I had Wrath now on this account, like right now in this party, I don't have Wrath. So I had Wrath, so I put him here, and Your Wrath was able to handle his lane. But the other three lanes were questionable. Th those were the three lanes that I was struggling with. So what I was able to do, um, I'm gonna just set up this other lane so that things aren't getting through while I'm talking. But so since Wrath could handle this lane just fine, but Vorath, I'm going to use him as the example, and I think actually he was the fighter I was using. He wasn't able to hold a lane by himself. He was taking too much damage. So what I did was I had him... My mouse is messing up. Sorry. I had him in a lane, and then I put Muriel beside him so that when Muriel activated her ultimate, she would end up healing him because he was the closest unit. And even though he is getting this static... Uh, life regen going on here. Um, he wasn't able to tank the final waves of Gear Raid 15 at the time. Right now, he definitely has the gear. He's also been awakened a few times. Um, but what I had was I had Vorath here, and then behind Muriel, I had Ein, who could clearly do enough damage. Um, so here, just so I don't mess things up, I'm going to put Aracha way over here. So I had somebody behind Muriel, or you could put them behind your Wrath and other champion here, facing inward. So, unfortunately, I only have defenders left, but th this was my concept, was I put damage dealers behind other damage dealers. So my Wrath here was able to hold his lane, and I just doubled up on the healing here. And then as he was taking damage, I used Muriel's ultimate. She would heal him up and it worked out. She gave him the extra healing he needed to be able to tank these big boys about to come down the lane. Now, unfortunately, like I said, my Vorath is overly equipped for this now. So this example does not work the way that it used to. But Muriel was able to just stand there tanking, holding up her hammer, healing everybody because she was a tank. She had no problem tanking the damage from that content. And specifically, I think my Muriel is only four star. I don't actually remember what my Muriel is. I think I recently promoted her to five star. Yeah, recently I promoted her to five star. Um, but she was four star at the time. She was tanking that content just fine. And she was able to heal everybody up. So for that reason, all the content I'm about to suggest her in is if you feel like your healers cannot hold their job by themselves and you need an additional healer, I can see Muriel being really good. Or if you like the concept of a defender that can heal out up everybody around her, she definitely has that niche role that you could have a healer on one side of the map and a tank healer on the other side of the map that might just heal up her and like one damage dealer next to her, right? So let's say you had uh, Muriel and I'm going to use Comet as an example. You'd have them guarding one half of the map and then having five other people guard the other half, right? You could have your Wrath, Deimos, Nisande to heal them and Idril to put out a whole lot of damage on the other half of the map because... Comet and Muriel can just handle everything on their own. That is where I believe Muriel is going to shine the most is yes, she can block things, but her ability to heal people up as needed because you are going to be relying mostly 
on her defender mechanic to block and stop things from passing her. And then as she's attacking, she can spot heal a little bit. And then her ultimate, she stops attacking, but she's constantly healing. So it is a, it's a really cool design in this game. And they haven't made her overpowered. I think whenever I get a chance to take her to six star right now, she's like 18th on my list. Uh, if I get the chance to take her to six star, I can revisit her in a video uh, showing her off. Like I want to do another series of this where I show off the champions at their five star variations. Uh, there are five awakened variations. So campaign, she's going to be a good tank for you. If you get her early, she's a good defender. She does not die easily because she scales with defense. It is great because as you get defensive gear, even if it's like defense and crit rate, you're still going to want to give that to her, right? It's still extra defense for her. It's going to feel good. And she can still spot heal a bit. Obviously, it's going to be less because you don't have that healing effect. But as you get any gear that has defense and healing effect or the vice versa, healing effect and defense, you can give it to her. Uh, so that's for the campaign specifically, right? Arena, if you need the defender, which is very good for early, early players in the game, we want to stop things from attacking our base. So needing a defender, she can kind of do her job admittedly i think rex kind of does the defender job a little bit better in the arena i can't really think of a, a reason that i want a defender that can heal everybody around her as well i guess in the sustained dps there is a mob that walks past and deals damage to everybody so that could be a mob that you might want to stop them in their place and then heal up a whole bunch of people and if muriel could keep herself up in that mob then I would argue and they're doing magic damage for the record if she can keep herself up and then potentially everybody else up or keep that damage away from them I I could see that being the one place a sustained DPS I think that's a stretch though I think having better damage or a debuffer so that you can annihilate the enemies faster would be better but that is a decent place that she could be in the Void Rift, there's a bunch of enemies that attack specifically. If there's a defender on your team, they will attack that location. So for that reason, she's going to be great in the Void Rift. Understand though, I don't know when I need a defender that heals themselves and other party members over some of the other defenders. So again, like Olog, and I mention Olog so frequently because once you get past uh, the first two mobs in the Void Rift, you get Olog for free. So with that being said, I do think he's a fair comparison at that epic level. So in raids, anywhere that we need a defender or a healer, she could be useful in. I do think that the your typical healers will be better. So if you're thinking about like your marksman raid, some of the flies start attacking back. Um, or having the normal healers, like your Camille, your Aaron or any other epic healer, I think that they are typically going to heal a bit better than Muriel can heal. And you don't really need her for the tanking. You could put her up front so that she's tanking some bullets. Um, so there is a bit of strategy that you could use there. I guess that works, <laughs> right? Uh, mages, it's the same thing. Defenders to stop things from reaching your crystal. She would be perfect, she's a defender. Endurance, her ability to defend and heal makes her very, very valuable in the endurance run for sure. Melee attack, I kind of showed off the strategy that I had to use with her. And then as you get further and further in the melee attacks to like extreme one and two, I'm sure that her being a defender that can heal also has a very good place. Um, if you have somebody like Aracha, Zilla 2, uh, arrogance that can reach other areas. Sometimes having a defender that can just stop things so that Zilla 2 can do all the killing. And then if Zilla 2 is taking damage, your tank can heal him back up or uh, her, heal her back up, pardon me, uh, has a good place for her. Guild boss. Guild boss would be a very interesting place. Again, I haven't focused on making my Muriel the best version of herself. 
So in the potential that you do use her in Guild Boss, um, I have tested Azor in Guild Boss. So we had a secondary account that had Azor on it. Azor just didn't die to Guild Boss, which makes me think that the Guild Boss has a lot of magic-based damage in its kit. And then its Claw Swipe is a lot of physical-based damage. Azor did not have any self-healing in his kit. So I think Muriel actually would have a good place in Clan Boss as a, like, as a secondary healer for you. But because she's not really going to be putting out a whole lot of damage, understand her, the addition of her to your team, she better be keeping people alive. Otherwise, I would just replace her for another damage dealer. Because if a damage dealer dies, you can just summon out a new one. And it's not that big of a deal. Artifact Material Raid. This is one of the better places I think that she would thrive in. Uh, I don't have the best gear on her. But we're going to go ahead and test her out and see how well she survives in here. So I have her to Awakening 3. I don't remember when I got extra copies of her for that. I know she has some gear on her. As I remember, though, it's like yellow gear. So I am not anticipating her to tank well in this scenario. However, I do have a backup healer to keep her alive. Because even Olog can kind of struggle in this content. I didn't mean to summon him there, but whatever. So here we can see, even with only okay gear on her... She's, she's tanking well enough that she can tank it because of the defense stacking I apparently did on her ages ago. Ready or not, this is war. Once uh, Salazar ults, if I have her ultimate available, um, I will uh, try to heal everybody up so we can see what kind of numbers that is. So yeah, when she used her ultimate, she got right back up to full health. She's healing for about 6,000 health right now. And again, I would heavily argue, I don't think I have my Muriel in good enough gear to showcase her properly for this video. Um, I have very old yellow gear on her, which is probably just all defense gear. And... Um, some healing effect as a substat on it. Because that's what made sense to me at the time. This is a good showcase, though, that she is able to tank the current Salazar that I'm fighting, level 17 Salazar. And with a good healer alongside of her, she won't go down. She is able to AoE heal everybody else up alongside of her. And that's literally what we want from our tank. We want them to be able to survive. And then in her case, the added bonus that she brings to the party is that she heals everybody else up. And because we have our Awakened, she's healing up anybody on the battlefield. This feels good. This feels great. I think this is a good place for her. That was Muriel, by the way. I definitely don't recognize that voice line. Tide? Tide has a very interesting implication for Muriel. So because she's a defender and a healer, you kind of get the best of a lot of stat increases that the talent trees give. So I think Muriel might be a very good sleeper agent for inside of Tide. Um, her BP, I think, scales with everything because her BP would scale with damage values as well as, like, healing effects and defense. So, ultimately, right? Uh, ultimately, I think that she's actually a very good pick in Tide. Um, how well she just did in that Artifact Material Raid, I think I am going to work at gearing her up and trying her in Tide because I need to have three tanks in Tide anyways for a level that I'm struggling with. Uh, I think that she would be great there. For your experience raid and uh, gold raid, 
she's only going to be good as a defender here. You're not really taking enough damage that you ever need a healer. So her being able to block three units is good. And she only costs 17. A lot of the other defenders can cost like 18 or 19 on average um, as you get to epic defenders. So she's a little bit cheaper. However, again, we're not counting on her for her damage here. We're counting on her ability to block. So for that reason, you might want to play with like a fighter that does a lot more damage or even a defender that might have some better damage than her. Because again, her big shtick is healing, not dealing damage. Gear raids. I could see her being amazing in gear raid too. Um, I have de definitely underestimated Muriel, how well she just performed in the artifact raid. Uh, definitely in gear raid two, you want to have defenders and her ability to heal those around her could let her heal during the ground pounds and let you just survive through things. And she probably just takes very little damage from them since she's a defense based character. So when it comes to gearing her up, I would make sure all your gear at least has that defense percentage as a substat. And then uh, when you get to your uh, bangle, ring, and amulet, I would heavily encourage that the main stat ideally is actually HP percentage with defense percentage and healing effect as a substat. With her specifically though, because her healing scales off of her defense, you could go defense percentage as the main and then HP percentage and healing as substats. I will kind of leave that up to you. Uh, for anybody asking why not healing effect as the main stat, there is potential to it. From what I understand, there is diminishing returns after 100. So a lot of the healing effects that you get from uh, Ring Amulet and Bangle they will get you up to 100 way too quickly. And the stat increases that you get, uh, especially like as you get further in, you get to yellow gear, it is a 34% increase to that primary stat. And then when you get to red gear, it becomes a 60%. So if like, you choose defense percentage or HP percentage, it's a 60% increase. I would argue that those are just as valuable for her, if not more, because again, her healing is kind of a bonus to her being a tank. It's not the reason we're picking her. We, we pick her as a tank because we need something to be blocked off. So I would say her survivability, and this goes for a lot of your healers in general. If your healer isn't surviving, you're wasting cost at that point. So for that reason, her survivability, I would say is top tier. In gear raid three, uh, you do have a slot where you can have a ground unit this could be a reason for you to bring Muriel. I don't think that would be the best place for her. I think other healers do her job better. Muriel would also only be able to ultimate to heal everybody in the party. She's never making contact with attacks. So with that being said, I don't think that's the best use for her. But if you felt like I really just need a little bit of extra healing and I don't have any other ground units to put in there, you could bring Muriel to gear raid three or your marksman just to tank up damage and maybe ultimate heal people back up to full. I, I would say use caution on those aerial stages. Faction trials, which I apparently have not done today. Um, for your basic, when you need a defender, she obviously is gonna do a great job. What makes Muriel really good in the basic trial is that the further in you get, you fight this lizard, I forget what its name is, it's like a Dimitri or something like that. Whatever the lizard's name is, he likes to yell, and when he yells, he deals a lot of damage. He also gets this AoE poison cloud around him, that, or not poison, but like dust cloud, that just does magic damage around him. For that reason, Muriel probably is the one champion that could stop him and be healing herself while fighting him and be like healing up other people in the process so this is a great place where i see muriel having another good home in the game when it comes to trials she is part of the watchers um in the watchers it's kind of the same thing where when you need a tank she's going to fill that tank role 
I don't remember anybody else taking damage in the Watchers besides your tanks and fighters. So she will be good as a frontline healer in that. But we've kind of beaten that 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 nail into the ground, so to speak, with how much that's an obvious statement. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you for Muriel. Um, in all honesty, I was not expecting her to tank Salazar so incredibly well. Let's go look at her gear real quick to see what the heck I've given her because uh, I am very shocked at exactly how well she she handled that. So she does have one piece of red armor on, right? Uh, so she's got healing effect, defense bonus, and HP bonus. I'm very impressed with the amount that she tanked. Uh, HP bonus with defense bonus and healing effect. Uh, that's how I had her geared forever ago. She was a tank I was using. Once I got Olog, though, she took a huge backseat. Um, I think, though, that we just proved that she's a lot better than we expected. And with no skill dust, she was healing for 6,000. Is a very impressive amount. So, feels good. So guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button down below. If you want to join us over at twitch.tv backslash Sprinklebeard, try to stream every day from Sunday through Wednesday, whenever I can, if I'm not working overtime at my 12 hour job. So please bear with me for the days that I'm inconsistent on streaming. Thank you very much. And until that next time, ta-ta.